Here in Michigan yesterday morning, our governor came onto TV and uh, she had an announcement. Now, I was hoping that she was going to say that Independence Day weekend didn't yield uh, these massive numbers of, of COVID-19 cases because that's what the prediction was beforehand. She had shut down some of the bars and restaurants up north because people were going going up north for the, the weekend to, to get away from it all. And there was all this fear mongering about this is going to cause our numbers to go up. And uh, I was hoping that she was going to say, well, we were wrong. The numbers didn't go up, so we're going to continue to reopen Michigan. Well, that's not what she was talking about. What I feared was that she was going to make a mandatory mask order, you know, one with penalties this time, because her standing order right now is that really about the only way you can be fined or, or arrested or charged is if you're considered trespassing. It's just like open carry. I can walk into Walmart open carrying a gun, but if they ask me to leave, I have to leave. Otherwise, at that point, they can call the cops and have me arrested for trespassing, but not for having the gun. It's the same thing with the mask. I can walk into Walmart without a mask, but if they ask me to put on a mask and I refuse, at that point, if they ask me to leave because I've refused and I refuse to leave, trespassing. You see how that works out? Well, I was kind of concerned that she was going to actually come up with some sort of crazy fine or make it a misdemeanor or something else like that, but she didn't, she didn't say that either. No, this is something I absolutely didn't expect her to say. But she is saying that COVID-19 and the medical professionals dealing with it in the state of Michigan are racist. Yeah, you heard me right. She said COVID-19 is racist against black people and the people working in the medical field in Michigan who have been dealing with COVID-19 are racists as well. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, what I've got here as far as numbers, because she's all about the data, right? Blacks make up 14% of the population of Michigan, which is, as of 2019, 9.987 million people. However, black, the black population in Michigan make up 30% of the cases and 40% of the deaths with COVID-19. To give you an example, the white population only uh, is 40% uh, of the cases, so that's 10% more. I couldn't get any data on, on white deaths you know, I guess because it's because of our white privilege, right? Now, to date, over the past four months, there have been 67,683 cases in Michigan with, two, with 6,024 6, dead. That is, over the course of four months, 0.03% of the state of Michigan have died from this. Yeah, that's... And, and we're, we're doing all of this fear mongering and, and taking all these feel good measures and closing down the schools and people are out of work and you can't, you still can't go to the movie theater and yeah. Okay. So getting back to her, um, her jumping on the racism bandwagon, because, you know, right now that's the time to do it, especially if you're a white politician, you absolutely have to, you have to let black people know that you care about them. And uh, more or less, she come up with executive directive 2020-7, which, which is to, in order to receive a new medical license or to renew your medical license, you must take racial bias training. Now, she did say that she was going to take this training herself. Isn't that big of her? She, she had the chief medical officer for the state, who is black and a woman, come on and talk. She had some other black lady come on and talk. She had a uh, the lieutenant governor come on. He's black. He talked. And uh, there was a black dean from a college and a white dean from a college. She was really stacking up the, the people speaking today, you know, to show, even though she's white, she's not a racist. I, I I don't even know where to go with this. Okay, so getting back to it, I guess, and you'll have to forgive me, I'm reading off my notes, and uh, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to making notes. So more or less, she's jumping on the racism bandwagon like all the other politicians. She's trying to keep voters because right now she's very unpopular in our state. Lieutenant Governor, who once again is black, said that 23 of his family members died from COVID-19. 23. I'm having a hard time believing that. The chief medical officer, I can never remember her name, uh, she said, she, what she talked about was that, um, she's saying that blacks are being turned away from COVID-19 testing because of racism. Blacks, uh, let's see, uh, she blames black poverty on historical discrimination policies. Well, um, maybe she needs to do some research because um, the historical discrimination policies come from the Democrats and that's Governor Whitmer, you know, her boss's political party. I mean, anybody know LBJ? This is where it all comes from, right? Well, anyhow, uh, foot in mouth, you know, she goes on to, to talk about that um, people are being turned away at the testing centers and they need more testing. All right, my understanding is you can't just drive up to this testing center and go, I wanna get tested. You have to have like a note from a doctor. You don't actually have to physically go to the doctor's office. You can go talk to them on the phone or you can, you can do a teledoc where you do it, you know, virtual, like on your phone or on your laptop or something. Uh, like a conference call or like like a like a, a Skype type thing, right? But you have to have your doctor, and and all you have to do is tell your doctor you're having symptoms. They're going to ask you some questions, this, that, and the other. So, did anybody take the time to ask? Are these just random people, black, white, or otherwise, driving up to these testing stations demanding to be tested because they're scared, and they didn't bother to get permission from a doctor first? Nobody mentioned that in the conference, and that makes me wonder if they're just playing up this situation to once again jump on the racism bandwagon. So, in addition to that, she did discuss masks. And what she said was, well, first off, I want to explain that everybody who walked up there to speak took off their mask to speak, or they walked up there without a mask on. And some of them took their mask and put it on the podium. And then somebody would come up behind them and put their mask on the podium. The same podium the other person's mask was just sitting on. Wouldn't that contaminate the mask? Another thing is the governor, when she took off her mask, she's playing with it. She's fidgeting around with it. And she's touching the side that she breathes into, she sneezes into, she coughs into, right? She's proving the whole point I've been saying about improper use of personal protective equipment. First off, this, some of this stuff is feel-good stuff. It's not really going to work. But it's a simple fact that because you're wearing the mask, you're touching your face more. You're rubbing your nose. You're rubbing your eyes. You're taking the mask off. You're, you're rubbing your face. You're getting your face all sweaty. It doesn't work, people. And the governor just proved it by her behavior on TV, live on TV. So... She was saying that she's encouraging Michigan citizens to tell others publicly or on social media to wear a mask. More or less, she's asking the people in Michigan to do her dirty work for her. She said she's not going to make it a finer misdemeanor yet, but they're looking into it. She said she would rather just have people do the right thing. And she said that lo local jurisdictions should enforce whatever rule or law there is out there. She did, at the end, reemphasize, and I put this in quotations because this is what she said, politely but forcefully tell people to wear a mask. Politely but forcefully? Exactly how the hell do you do that? I can see a lot of fights happening because of this. She's actually encouraging us to fight each other. This is our leader. Real nice leadership skills there. Real good, Governor. And if you think about it, between playing the whole racism card in the beginning and then in, also in the beginning and at the end discussing masks and trying to get Michigan citizens to, to fight each other over the masks. More or less, she's proving that she's nothing but a, a divisive bitch is what she is. Now, she ended it with, uh, she alluded to the fact that she was gonna use our kids as like a political wedge or political pick if she doesn't start getting her way. More or less saying, you want your kids to go to school in the fall? You better do what I say. She kind of hinted around to that. So that will probably be the next place she goes to. Are smart. 
we're tough, we can figure out how to do it politely, but also forcefully because it's on all of us. If we're gonna get our kids back in school in eight weeks, we've gotta at least stay in phase four, if not move into phase five and on the trajectory we're on, it's very we much a question. Force change and come together to create solutions. Uh, I've not announced a step back today. I'm certainly not announcing a step forward today. But if we want to be in a position in eight weeks from now where we can get our kids back in in-person um, education, this trend can't continue. And that's why masking up is gonna be so important and that's why we'll be announcing additional steps toward encouraging compliance, but that we're asking on every Michigander to do their part. We gotta get the politics out of this conversation and just do what we know to be the right thing. So am I ready to call her a tyrant yet? I'm just about ready to. I really am because I'm, I'm sick of our politicians playing up this racism thing in America. We were, we, were, we were doing so well as a country and they're using it, they're using it for their own political gain. It's, it's to divide us so they can control us. That's tyranny. And the whole feel good measure mass thing and trying to turn people against each other. Yeah, that's not really tyranny, but that's not, that's not what our governor or president or any of our political leaders should be doing. That's not what we elected them for. But it is creating division. And I guess that division is a form of control. So maybe it is some tyranny too. And then threatening us with our own, with our children's well-being, educational well-being. That, as a parent, that's crossing the line. So, in my next video about her, you may hear me call her a tyrant, like everybody else has been. I've been calling her an idiot, and I'm going to continue to call her an idiot. In closing. I'd like to say that even though I talked about a lot of political stuff, this isn't a political issue for me. It might sound like it, and I might have been calling out some things that the Democratic Party have done, but that's because I'm talking about history, and I'm talking about people that are not taking the time to think before they speak, especially live on television. And I think that even though there are people out there that are wearing a mask because of, of political motivations. There are people that are also wearing a mask because they've been told if they don't, they're gonna die and they're scared. There are people that are afraid they're gonna get arrested or they won't be allowed in a, into a store if they don't wear a mask. And there's other people that are just succumbing to peer pressure. And for me, when I don't wear a mask, it's not a political statement. When I make these videos criticizing the actions of the governor, it's not a political statement. This is about my family and myself. We just want to get our lives back to normal. We're willing to take the reasonable risks every single day when we get in a car and drive somewhere. We're willing to take the reasonable risks every day we go somewhere where somebody could commit a crime. We're willing to take the risk with this strain of the flu because that's all it really is. It's the strain, it's a strain of of the flu. Her own data proves that we have overreacted to this and we have damaged a lot of things. Our education system, our economy, and the morale of the citizens. And now it's being used to divide us and control us. But for me, it's not a political issue. It's a personal issue. If we had a Republican governor that has done all the same things, I'd still be making these videos. And I just want that to be clear. I know the video's been kind of long and I appreciate everybody who stuck around for it. If, if you want to leave any comments, I'm leaving the comments turned on. And everybody out there, buckle up and stay vigilant. Thanks for listening. You know, you don't handshake anymore. You do the elbow thing. Fuck you.